Hello folks, about three years ago, I made a video about setting up this aquarium. And in between that time, it's gone from being uh, the, the shiny new thing to the problem child, and then now old reliable, this tank is uh, almost zero maintenance. So in this video, I'm gonna do a three year review. We're gonna talk about uh, the experience of keeping this over the past three years. I'm gonna do a little bit of an update and kind of tell you where it's at now. And I'm gonna finish off with telling you what I do for maintenance with this particular tank. So this aquarium and its matching stand, this is the stand that comes with it uh, that was made to go with this particular tank and sold by Fluval. Uh, this kit together was probably one of the most expensive uh, aquarium kits I've ever purchased. And I did purchase this one outright. Uh, this was at a time where you couldn't get these, like you couldn't get like a review copy, I guess, of one of these tanks. And so I just went ahead and bought it myself. Uh, I guess that I think I have the receipt. This tank was $5.29 with the stand. Uh, I believe they did free shipping with that. And then I put another $50 in aqua soil in the bottom of it. So that's, uh, that was what this tank cost to set up. Aside from the driftwood and the plants. Now, if I remember correctly, a lot of the plants came from my, uh, my 55 gallon dirted tank that I had broken down. So uh, what you're looking at here is about you know, $600 $640 worth of tank to set it up if you bought it all. There are, of course, infinite and cheaper options for the, uh, for the substrate, and you may or may not even want driftwood inside of your aquarium, or plants for that matter. I would always go with plants, but some people, just if you just wanted this empty, you're looking at $530 or so. But this was about three years ago. It could be more or less now. But even with that price, I do highly recommend that you get the second light. If you look in the top of here, there's two. Uh, there's two lights. There, there are smart lights that you can work into the app. They can be worked independently or you can copy the config from one to another. And uh, uh, they're one of the coolest features of this tank. I mean, well, there's a lot of cool features, but I love, love, love the lights and the way they ramp up and ramp down. Uh, this tank's light is on. We're getting a little bit into the maintenance, but this tank light is on for about, I would say around 10 hours a day. It's very dim it's at first and it ends at a very, I've got a nice sun, long sunset -y mode for this tank too, but I wanted something that would stay on for a bit after I got home from work so I could look in here and stuff. And that prolonged photo period uh, helps the plants grow a lot, but it doesn't uh, give it an overwhelming amount of algae. They just, they get their light over a longer period of time and not in like a short intense period of time. I did add that second light, and that, that second light will probably add another, uh, I can't remember what they cost, at least, I'd say at least $60, maybe closer to $80. So I think with one light, you, you could probably do a lot with one light in here. Uh, the second light to me uh, was essential because I really wanted to spread the light evenly all the way across, and I don't think one light was going to do that too well, especially with the hardscape and the way I'd kind of laid it out. It is sort of a reverse bow front. It's got the, the bow front, but it seems to kind of go uh, like long ways. That's, uh, that's been a point of contention for a lot of people. I really like it. Like to me, it gives, it gives it a kind of an interesting visual effect, like the sort of like a fishbowl, but, but it doesn't mess with your perception so much looking at it. Because most of the time you're gonna be looking at it from like right here or maybe straight on. It gets kind of strange and it's really hard to photograph at times uh, from down low on these other areas. But, uh, <laughs> but I have to say overall, it's really not been a big deal. And I really enjoy this kind of bowed effect that it gives, it almost sort of magnifies it in a way. Something I've noticed uh, with this tank and every other tank that has the built-in filter, these little kit tanks with the filter incorporated into the back of it, like the fluval specs and stuff like that. Uh, you tend to get this film across the surface of the water. Uh, that probably happens with a lot of other uh, types of filters too, but I know I noticed that like from the fluval spec on up, I've always had that issue. What I did with this tank is I put a, um, I put a surface skimmer. I've incorporated one into the back of the tank over here and just 
just kind of blows uh, the water back through the Anubius, but it skims the surface of the water. It does a great job. It's, uh, and it's been really easy to maintain and stuff. It just kind of floats there. I have on occasion, uh, when I do a water change, I might find a shrimp or something inside and I've just kind of let them out. It's nice to have the surface of the water kept clear and it does a great job of kind of adding a little bit of circulation, especially in these kind of dense pockets where the plants are, are pretty thick. This tank is planted out mostly a, a Nubius of uh, different varieties. Uh, there's some Copophilia in here, there's some Nana in here, some maybe Nana Petite, uh, perhaps. Uh, it was a combination of basically every plant I had in my dirted 55 tank, uh, as well as a few other tanks from around here. I've got a couple of other plants, uh, a couple of other stem plants, and I've got some uh, java fern in here also. It's, it's a really is a mixed bag. I've got a little bit of a carpet going across the bottom here. It, it looks really good at that distance and stuff. It sort of breaks apart as you get a little closer, but this is a crypt parv, and it is a very, very slow growing plant, but it, it has managed to make its way kind of across through here. And uh, it seems to do okay in these kind of like darker areas too. So it doesn't get a lot of light. Uh, these things take up a lot of the light, the Anubias at the top. Uh, but they've done really well and they've held their own against the crypts. I've got some Crypt Wendetti in here also. And I've had to kind of uh, fight it back because it just wants to grow all, over, all through the front. So I've, I pluck it up whenever I see it kind of come up through here. But other than that, there's not a lot of trimming. Uh, I do trim like every few months or so. I have to go through the Anubius at the top here and I just kind of go through it and I take out any bad leaves. And uh, sometimes I trim for samples too. And I'll just take like bigger chunks of it out here and there just to keep it, uh, just to keep everything calm. It, it stays pretty thick. In fact, I'll, I can do a lot of trimming before I even really start to notice that anything's missing out of here. But because Anubius is such a slow growing plant, in fact, most of these plants are pretty slow growing plants, because of that, I don't really have a lot of work to do trimming wise. Like I, like I said, I'll come in here, if I see something out of place, I'll come in and get it really quick. But for the most part, I'm not in here every day or every week or every month. It's, it's more like a two or three months go by, I pull out some Anubius and maybe trim some stuff, maybe tuck some, uh, tuck some vines in here and there. It, to make it look a little bit more attractive and that's it. As far as water changes on this tank, uh, right now I'm doing it about once a month and that does, it seems like a really long period of time but it's just, it's rock solid. I, I don't get uh, a coating of algae even across the glass, not a big one. Uh, now I did clean the glass a little bit for this. I just use a, a credit card uh, but I have just uh, like a really gentle film of, of algae, especially compared to other tanks that have uh, kind of gotten out of control. There are some tanks you clean them and you come back and it's like not even six or seven days later and they already need to be uh, scraped off again. This tank, this tank will look like this for many, many, many weeks. Like I just did this today, but before I did it, uh, you really, uh, you couldn't tell much. It was a little bit, there was a little bit of spots here and there, but it stays pretty clean. And this is a, in a room with like a big window that gets sunlight from the sunset light comes right in through here and hits this tank. So it's a, it's about as well balanced as I've ever been able to achieve with, with an aquarium. And that balance, uh, you're, you can get that with any aquarium. You don't have to buy this one. I just got lucky and that the one I invested a lot of monetarily in also happened to uh, work out okay. I do think my investment in aqua soil was money well spent. If you look in here, it's still pretty granular and stuff. It hasn't turned into mush after three years. And uh, uh, it's just regular Amazonia, ADA Amazonia. So for my setup videos for this, I did a whole video just on the hardscape. And then I did a video about planting it and finishing it out. Uh, those will be linked uh, at the end of this video. Now, as far as what's living in here, I've got uh, Ember Tetras. Uh, those Ember Tetras have been around for a while. I've added to the school uh, a couple of times, I think, since I've had them. And uh, the other thing I've got in here are green neon Tetras. Those I got uh, in a video a long time ago. I mail ordered those from Rachel O'Leary in, in a video about mail ordering fish. And uh, so it's been uh, quite a few years and some of them are looking pretty old. 
I don't see green Endlers very often, or no, green neon Tetras very often here. So um, I haven't been able to increase the school. I've only seen them for sale maybe twice, and that was like pretty soon after I got the initial uh, quantity of them. So uh, I'm always on the lookout for those. Uh, I have a mono shrimp in here. I actually have probably four or five Amano shrimp in here. They were, if you remember, they were delivered to this aquarium in a TARDIS ornament <laughs> from another tank. It was pretty funny. I have a couple of pygmy quarry cats. Uh, the, the population is diminishing and they're really kind of impossible to catch in this tank. Anything in this tank that wants to get away from you just runs into all this and envious and, and there's no getting them out without pulling it all out. So. I'm very careful about any species that I add to this tank. Another good team player is the Siamese Algae Eater. Uh, I love having those in tanks. You'll, ne you'll never have any black beard algae in your tank uh, with one of those around. And I suspect they eat a lot of other kinds of algae too. And he's done a pretty good job of not, uh, not bullying anyone. I will eventually have to pull him out. He'll be too big for this. And uh, he'll go live in the 210 with his brothers. Also have this cool little goby in here. He's a uh, He's really interesting, <laughs> and uh, he, he's, he acts kind of like an autosynclus. He reminds me a lot of the autosynclus. Of course, it has a completely different shape and look to it, but uh, the way they behave is kind of reminiscent of, of one of those. He's actually one of my favorites. Uh, every time I go and look in the tank, like they run around a lot, but they don't hide per se, and uh, it's always fun to kind of look down the tank and do a little Where's Waldo, and you'll find them staring at you from one of the little dark corners in there. I've also got some peacock gudgeons, which are uh, being incredibly shy right now, but there's about four peacock gudgeons in here. And uh, I really enjoy them. I got them at a fish swap about a year ago. And that said, it's pretty lightly stocked. Uh, I keep it sort of lightly stocked because there's some other fish that are likely to kind of end up in here and, and shrimp too. So I'm probably, as I break down tanks or kind of redo tanks, I've got this as sort of a lifeboat to kind of help me out. And it might just kind of add to the population. One thing that can be a pain on the Fluval Flex tanks are the, or dealing with the lip. Uh, it's got a little bit of a lip on it, so you can kind of lean against it and open it somewhat like that, but it's not hinged or anything in the back. In fact, there's a guy on Etsy that made these uh, little 3D printed uh, kickstands, and I think there's an, a, this person's no longer making these. Uh, there's another person on Etsy, but uh, basically what they do is you can prop them up right here on the corners and having these makes maintenance a, like a lot easier to deal with because you're not in that awkward like balance and trying to keep keep that lid open just right or have a hand occupied doing that while you're trying to do something else. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do when these break. <laughs> Maybe make my own. Uh, that would be probably a smart thing to do. This model of the Fluval Flex is about 32 gallons. Uh, it's 123 liters, one, two, three liters. It's got, uh, it's got two sponges on either side. And I put a heater right in the middle. So it's got like a small chamber that the water kind of works its way into and then it goes into the, towards the bottom of that chamber and then up through some sponges. And those, those are the square sponges that you find in the back of the smaller versions of these tanks. And they have, um, and then they have little uh, cutouts inside of those sponges where you can put biological media. I pull out one of those sponges about every six months. I pull out one side or the other. Uh, I've got a little, for a while I tried a product called Algon. I, I didn't find that it worked. And, and I had a period of time with this tank, like about a year, uh, I guess it was about a year after I set it up, right before COVID. I, 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 it, this tank was doing great and then it just suddenly went bad and it was it was terrible like it had a really terrible time for about six months and then it kind of snapped back into place and then lately it's been fantastic so for the past year or so it's been really good knock on wood but during that troubled time i tried this product called algon i saw uh, actually no results from this i saw no difference from adding this to doing anything else uh, but I did have a pad left over, so I leave, <laughs> so I leave this pad in there, uh, and it's just to mark which of the filters that I've cleaned last. Uh, so basically, I'll, I'll pull one of those out, I'll kind of rinse it out, 
uh, I'll, I'll take some aquarium water, I'll put it into a bucket. I'll rinse that filter out in there and I kind of rinse the media off a little bit in there and I squeeze it out and then I put all the media back and I put it in here and then I throw that Algon pad over onto the other side so I know to do that one next time. And in this way, I'm really, really careful. I've never noticed like a, a low amount of flow in there. I do it just because it feels like I should, you know, periodically clean those filters out a little bit or kind of keep them from getting too, uh, too clogged down. I've never noticed that the, the, the water flow slows down or anything like that, but, but I do do that periodically. I'll take one and then the other one. So right in the middle, right in the middle of this thing is there's an opening and that's a place where you can put a, a heater. You do have to watch out because uh, with all of these tanks, uh, what will happen is as things evaporate, and I wanted to mention too that the way this slit is made, uh, it, everything is covered. Every single part of it's covered. There's even a little bit, little tiny feeding lid on the top that you can uh, do that instead of opening the whole thing. And because of that, this doesn't evaporate much at all. Uh, I, I did a water change on this about uh, three weeks ago, and the water is still all the way to the top. Uh, that's without topping it off at all. I haven't had to do any of that. So evaporation-wise, this, uh, this thing holds its water really, really well. But on these tanks with the internal filters, uh, as the water evaporates, there's always like a pump-out chamber, and this one's right in the middle between those two sponges. And in that pump out chamber, uh, that's where the evaporation is going to show first. So it's always going to be a little bit lower than the, than the outside of your tank. So you do have to kind of notice, you know, look in there periodically and just see what your water level is. Uh, that's where I like to stick my heater uh, is in there. And because of that water level going down, it's uh, in a little bit of danger of like uh, exposing that heater if you let it go too far. It hasn't been a problem with me, especially due to the low evaporation in here, but that's uh, at least something to mention, right? That's something you should notice in any of these tanks with the, uh, the built-in filter in the back. That's something they do. So of course they have different versions of this tank. They have the 15 gallon, which uh, I've featured on this channel before, and they have a nine gallon, which I've never set up before, but will be setting up at my club meeting uh, next month. And one lucky person at that meeting is going to receive this fully aquascaped tank. Uh, Tanner is going to come and do plants in there. I'm going to do hardscape, and he's going to do the plants, and we're going to team up on that. And uh, I don't know, have fun doing that project. And then we're going to give it away. I'm planning to shoot a, a video, probably be sort of an abridged uh, setup video for this tank. So uh, that'll be interesting to see. Look forward to that soon. Aside from the size, the biggest comparison uh, to make between the small ones and this one is the lighting. Uh, the light in this bigger one is so good. It's far superior to the other ones. Uh, I think you can do a lot with the lights in the other tanks, but they're not, they're not nearly as interesting as these, uh, at least to me. That's, that's, that's the big difference between the two, in my opinion, aside from the size, of course. This stand fits with the tank really well. It's, it's got some interesting shapes to it, but it's also kind of uh, indistinct and demure. You know, it doesn't take away from the aquarium at all. Uh, there's plenty of room in here and a little bit of a, there's a shelf and then uh, a lot more room under there if you want to do something else, if you wanted to incorporate a canister filter or just store a bunch of stuff, uh, there's plenty of room in there for that. And that's about it. I'd be curious to know what you think of this tank. Do you have one? Would you be interested in one? I'd love to know. And folks, that's all I got for you this week. Until next time, follow your bliss, keep a clean tank, and I'll see you soon. If you'd like to know more about the setup or, or the ongoing story of this tank, you can look at this playlist right here. If you'd like to see something YouTube thinks you would like, you can click right here. Of course, subscribe. I'd love to see you again. Bye-bye.